What's going on guys and welcome to another video. My name is Theo and I'm a freshman in college. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my EDC or everyday carry. EDC is a pretty self-explanatory term but just to give some background it consists of the tools and items that you carry on you every day. There's actually a huge online movement for this hobby but I can't stress enough that for me EDC is an investment just as much as it is a hobby. I have a predilection for gear that is a little bit on the more expensive end of the spectrum, but it is all purchased with my own money from working part-time in high school. If it's something that I know I'm going to use daily and appreciate, then I really think it's warranted to splurge a little. Of course, that's just my paradigm, and everyone is certainly entitled to their own take on the matter. So with that said, let's go over the gear. First up is my daily driver, the iPhone X in Space Gray. This is the 256GB model, and I actually picked this up quite recently on a Black Friday sale. For reference, my previous phone was an iPhone 6S, 32GB, and relative to my iPhone 6S, the difference between the two is like night and day. The 10 is much faster and the camera is way better. For all Apple's foibles, I don't think there's any denying that the phone itself is quality. Anyways, the most obvious drawback of a phone like this is the price. Even with the sale I got it on, the price came out to roughly $800 after taxes, which is a crap ton of money for someone like me. It is what it is though, and I'm pleased with my decision to purchase it. A prime reason why I purchased the 256GB model is for longevity. I fully intend for this to be my daily driver for at least the next 3 years or so. The other big drawback of a phone like the iPhone X is the glass back, which is prone to cracking if dropped. I think the charge to replace a crack back is something like $500, which is simply absurd. In this respect, a case is critical. The case I'm running is the Mouse Limitless version 2 in Aramid Carbon Fiber. I went with this case for three reasons. One, it's super lightweight and slim. I was using an Autobox Defender case before I got this one, and it was super bulky. I literally could not get the phone in and out of my pocket without a struggle. Second, this case is surprisingly very protective. There's a lot of video reviews of this case online that shows some of the abuse it's been subjected to, but the gist of it is that it's got a proprietary lining that's really good at absorbing shock. Finally, and probably for the most vain reason of all, it just looks good. The pattern and texture are both on point, and it looks downright classy. I think it's only fair to note that Aramid carbon fiber isn't real real carbon fiber. Making a phone case out of carbon fiber would be a ridiculous idea because of how brittle the material is by its nature. Plus, carbon fiber conducts electricity very well, which would interfere with your phone signal. Once again, this case sort of falls short in the value department. Even with the sale mouse is having, the case cost me almost $40. That seems like a lot for what you're getting. With that said, there's little doubt that this is one of the best cases on the market for the 10. Alright, the third item in my EDC is my watch. I'm the type of guy who wears his watch 24-7, and I hate being late to stuff, so it's really important to me that I have a good watch. While I do have a phone, it feels really awkward and almost rude, especially when you're with other people, to pop it out just to check the time. In this regard, a watch is a lot more elegant. My current watch is the Citizen AT40050 e This is a very well-constructed watch. It's made out of titanium and the face is sapphire. I had an Apple Watch Series 3 for a while, and it felt like I had to constantly baby the thing for fear of it breaking or scratching. Then I also came to the conclusion that it was probably going to be outdated in a couple years, so I ditched both the Apple Watch and my Fitbit. What's great about this watch is that it's got Citizen's Eco Drive, which means it's completely solar powered and never have to worry about changing the battery. Additionally, it syncs daily with a radio signal, so the time is always exact, and it's got a perpetual calendar so you never have to reset the date. Overall, this is a solid watch that combines quality and a myriad of functions at a reasonable price. Here's my wallet, it's a front pocket one. It's made by a company called Dango, which makes some interesting products. People will either love or hate this wallet for a couple of reasons. First off, because it's a front pocket wallet, the capacity is pretty limited. There's a thick rubber band that keeps everything together, but I don't recommend this wallet if you carry more than four to six cards. The RFID plate at the back will sort of quote unquote float if you insert too many cards. This personally isn't an issue for me, but it'll be a deal breaker for a lot of people. Okay, second thing about this wallet is the included multi-tool card that comes with it. In short, the card is an expensive piece of junk. It'll poke you, stab you, and suck up valuable room in the wallet. If you're going to buy this wallet, don't buy the multi-tool with it. I bought a two-wallet bundle for a Father's Day sale they were having, and I chucked that thing the first day I got the wallet, as did my dad. I thought I'd say what was bad about this wallet first, because I don't really recommend it at all unless you carry very little cards and are okay with your stuff in the same pocket getting scratched. With that said, it is my EDC wallet, and that's because it works well for my uses. The construction and build quality of the wallet itself are good. And let's be honest, the coolness factor is off the charts for this wallet. It looks great and goes well with a lot of outfits. Next up, here's the knife I carry every day. It's a Chris Reeve Sabenza 21 Small. This knife is well known as the benchmark of production knives and for good reason. 
The attention to detail and perfect machining of the knife are unprecedented for a production knife. The scales themselves are made out of grade 5 titanium and the blade is S35VN steel. I'm not sure if S35VN is still considered a super steel, but it's more than ample for my uses. I mainly use this knife for opening packages and boxes, so nothing really hardcore, but you'd be surprised by how handy a knife is on campus. I'm not a knife geek by any means, and this is one of the few items in my EDC that I can claim to have found the one. I have a few other knives, and I somehow always go back to the Sabenza. I think a key reason for this is because I'm in college where I'm surrounded by other students. The Sabenza carries well in that it's not flashy at all, and it looks very people friendly if that's a thing. Simultaneously, it does look very handsome and just feels right when in my hand. But there's one thing that's great about college is that they permit pocket knives, unlike the high school I went to. If you guys have watched some of my other videos, you know that I'm a big flashlight geek. It's basically how I got into EDC, and my flashlights are unequivocally the crux of my collection. I'm always rotating them out, and normally I'd show off my Migizmo Haiku, but that would be selling a lie. The one I've actually been carrying lately is the Freelux Synergy 1. This is a custom flashlight that came out quite recently, and I have a full re video review to the flashlight that you can check out in the link above. Anyways, there's a lot to love about this flashlight. The construction of the light is easily on par with most customs, which is insane for what it sells for. And the design of the body is also unique in that it allows for a wide variety of grips on the light. This is a great, great piece of gear that I can't recommend enough. I use my flashlights pretty much daily at school. At my college, a lot of students ride bikes, and it's beginning getting dark out pretty early because we gained an hour. It's unbelievable how many people use barely visible, cheapy lights on their bike, or just don't even have one at all. I've definitely avoided more than one collision because I have a flashlight mounted on my bike. It also comes in handy if I wake up at night and I'm trying not to disturb my roommates. Really, it's the little things that add up. Now, the output definitely isn't staggering on the Synergy 1, but it is more than enough for you if you're using the flashlight in an EDC capacity. I'd much rather take quality over quantity, especially when it comes to output. The next piece of my EDC is my pen. I have quite a few nice pens in my collection, although I've slowed down a lot. I remember being really into them for a couple months, and then my interest sort of died because you can only reinvent the wheel, or the pen in this case, so many times. Anyhow, the pen I use most frequently is the USG TIE Scribe. This is a nifty titanium pen, and I like it because it's the ideal length for my hands, and it will also take a good variety of refills if it runs out. The big feature on this pen though is the bolt action mechanism, which has been cleverly integrated with the clip. Functionally speaking, this is probably the best bolt action mechanism on the market and the bolt prevents the pen from actuating accidentally in your pocket and is also great to fiddle with. I take notes on an iPad with an Apple Pencil, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I don't need a pen still. Sometimes I'll forget my Apple Pencil, or iPad, or both. It's also just very handy to have a pen with me in case I need to write something down quickly. Taking notes digitally has its merits, but it can also be cumbersome at times. If there's one thing this pen falls short in though, it's that the level of quality isn't as good as I'm used to, especially coming from pens like the Felholter Type Bolt and Prometheus Alpha Pen. The TIE scribe is still a good value for the money though. Pretty much all of my pens are made out of titanium. And I do have a Mont Blanc that belonged to my grandpa, which I thought I was going to take to college, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized that probably wasn't a good idea. Um, aside from having it probably getting stolen, I probably would have snapped it in half from the amount of times I've dropped my pens. Last but not least, my EDC wouldn't be complete without my keychain. I do want a key smart, and it looks so cool, but I don't think my stuff would fit very well. Anyways, because I live in a dorm, here's the key to that. I also share a mailbox with my roommates, so here's the key to that. This yellow tag here is something they give you at the beginning of the year. If you show up to some restaurants in the nearby area, they'll give you a discount, which is pretty cool. Um, next up, I've got a Swiss Army Knife Classic. This thing is more handy than you'd think, especially the scissors. Um, I use those a ton, although I don't use the other tools very much, I guess. My keychain flashlight of choice is this custom flashlight called the Omicron. It's full grade 5 titanium and has blue tritium in the tail so you can easily find it at night. This is the only thing I've shown today that wasn't bought with my own money. It was a gift from my parents. And this here is a little TV strap I attached from WGW. Uh, I really like this type of stuff and I thought it was cute, so there it is. It's also a nice detraction from my otherwise pretty bland EDC. EDC. All said, I hope you guys enjoy taking a look at my everyday carry. I thought it'd be cool to make a video that engages specifically with how I actually use my stuff in a daily capacity as a college student. If there's enough demand, I'll also do a video that goes over my backpack and what I've got in there, which would be pretty cool. And I would enjoy making that, honestly. So yeah, thanks for watching and peace out.